Statistics and Excel. Confidence interval T distribution when standard deviation of population is not known. Get ready and some coffee because if we want to get futuristic, we need statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there are three tabs down below. Ex First, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts, a must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Sample, practice, blank, example, in essence, answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting the blank tab. The one we will be working on, as you can see, is blank. We'll build this from a blank worksheet practicing our excel tools as we construct it let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building looking at confidence intervals t distributions where the standard deviation of the population is not known the general scenario being similar to recent example problems in that we want to find information about a large population. In this case, we're looking at movie ratings, but we can't test every item within the population because there's just too many of them. Therefore, our strategy, as always, take a sample, hoping that we can apply the findings from the sample to the larger population. Two strategies typically used, one being hypothesis testing, the second being confidence intervals, hypothesis testing lending itself to situations where we think we know what the middle point is. So if we're talking about movie reviews, possibly the site gives us the average movie reviews and we want to test whether or not the number they're given to us is accurate or whether they're lying to us or something like that. In which case, we would imagine we can build our uh, graph around the hypothesis, the number that is given to us, and then see if our sample is far enough away from that middle point to then reject the hypothesis. Confidence intervals, on the other hand, are lending themselves to situations where we don't know what the middle point is. That's what we're trying to find. Therefore, the result we get from the sample, the mean, is basically going to be our middle point that we're going to have to construct an interval around. Now, you could still use concept of hypothesis testing to construct the interval by thinking about a hypothesis that every point around it, what if that was the actual hypothesis, that was the actual middle point. If the middle point was over here and I constructed a graph around that, would the result that I actually got be far enough away for me to reject the hypothesis? And you can repeat that process until you get a range which would basically be from peak to peak. However, it's easier to think about, I want to put this in the middle point and put some kind of curve around it so that I can just simply graph a curve and get my range from the confidence levels in the curve. That's what we would like to do. Now, if we had information about the population, such as possibly the mean and the standard deviation, then we might simply still be able to use the normal distribution. But... If we don't have that information, uh, then if we, we, we might need to use the T distributions. 
So that's what we'll do here. Now the T distributions are going to be basically a similar graph. You can use a similar picture, but there are different T distributions based on the degrees of freedom, which we'll talk about as we go through the practice problem, which basically means that the graphs are going to have slightly fatter tails. And that means that the confidence interval would have to be a little bit wider. So normally the T distributions lend themselves to situations where we don't know what the, the standard deviation is. And oftentimes when we have small samples, it's useful. And if we have small samples, then we would hope that the actual population data is basically bell-shaped because the, the, it, it might not, according to the central limit theorem, have enough data for it to start to take a bell-shaped form. However, even if we have large, uh, a large sample, then we might still be able to use the t-distributions, although the t-distributions at that point are going to tend themselves to be more towards the normal shaped curve uh, as, that, as we do that. Okay, that's the general idea. So practice tab has pre-formatted cells, so you can work the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, that's where we're going to construct this from scratch. All right, let's start with our starting point. We'll select the entire worksheet, right click on it like we normally do. I like to lay a baseline formatting, lay down the base, just like we're making a music track here. That's where you got to start. So we're going to say this is going to be uh, no negative numbers bracketed and red. And let's get rid of the decimals to start off with as well. I'm going to go to the home tab, make everything bold. You don't have to do that, but I think it's better if I'm trying to do a screen recording to have everything bold. I'm just going to put a title here, confidence intervals. It's going to be T distributions where the STDs of the population are not known. That's a dangerous situation when those STDs in the population aren't known. You got to have some, got to have a little bit of data to, to, to be able to properly orient your behavior. But we're going to go to the font. It shouldn't matter. It shouldn't even matter. Okay. All right. Whatever. We're going to say this is going to be black and white. All right. So we're going to imagine we're doing ratings of a movie from one to 10. So we're not doing a binomial. We've got a one to 10 rating on some kind of rating platform that we are imagining. And what's the what's the average rating that we're trying to get? So we can't we know we can't trust the actual platforms because they're paid off by the Hollywood. So we can't so we have to do our so we're going to do our own testing and see what the averages are possibly or something like that. So I'm going to make this orange and we'll make it uh, bordered. Okay, and so then let's, let's we're going to have our formula here. Uh, let's just put this over here. We're going to be using this within our process. Now you will recall that we're still going to need some information to construct our curve. So we need in order to construct a bell shaped curve, you need the standard deviation, and you need the middle point, which is uh, the mean. Now, according if we're using the concept of the central limit theorem, when we think about the standard deviation, we got the standard deviation of the population, we've got the standard deviation of the sample. And then we've got the standard deviation as though we're imagining we're taking every sample size or every possible sample of whatever sample size out of the population, which you will recall we're approximating with a formula. That's the one we're going to be using here. So here's the formula to get that number, the standard deviation of imagining every sample combination where it was. Uh, sigma over the square root of n, sigma being the standard deviation of the population, which we don't know this time. Therefore, we're going to approximate this one standard with the standard deviation of the sample. So we'll approximate that with the standard deviation of the sample and then possibly use t distributions as opposed to the normal distributions, which might give us a little bit more accuracy given the fact that we don't know that number, but we can approximate it. So over the square root of n, n being the sample size. And then this is the point that we can usually drop off, which we're going to do here if we're imagining big n, the population is large enough typically. So quick point on t distribution, t distribution, distribution. So used if data is normal shape, nor usually, or n is large and STD 
of the population not known, right? So STD of the population isn't known. And so then we're hoping that if we have a small sample, which is what this was kind of originally designed around when we have a small sample, then we can use the T distributions, which will be a little wider, giving us a little bit more accuracy uh, than the normal distributions. But it's found, I believe, that even if the even if you're talking about larger samples, you can still use the T distributions, although again, they'll tend towards, you would think, more towards the normal distributions as those sample size gets large. So I'm gonna make that black and white. And this is our intro data, which I'm now making orange these days, which is relatively new. It's a new phenomenon. Let's make a skinny B. Now I'm gonna make up our data. Now remember with our movie analogy here, this is the behind the scenes stuff. The actual people in the movie don't know this, but we wanna make it behind the scenes so we know what's actually happening. We know how many standard deviations, uh, how many STDs are in that population. So we're gonna actually make the population, let's say, well, this will be the input, let's say. And the input will help us to do a random generation. So let's go here. I'm gonna format paint that over here. Actually, wait a sec, what am I doing? Let me undo that. I need the numbers first. So we're gonna say the mean is three because the movie industry, as you know, is not doing too well. So that's like, I'm not talking about the critic scores. We're talking about the normal people that rate it because the critics, are a bunch of paid off hacks as far as I can as far as I can tell. So so it's pretty bad these days. It's just a note. So it's like out of three. That's like most movies it seems like to me. I'm just making these numbers up, but I feel like they're pretty that's pretty it's pretty close. So let's put some brackets around this and then let's make it red and white. And then I'm gonna make this a little smaller and then I'll make a skinny E by taking the skinny B home tab format painter put that over here and then we're going to have our data data and so I'm going to say make this black and white so I'm just going to simulate our data as though we're pulling it from the platform or something randomly to get our, our random sample so we'll simulate that by going to the data if you don't have the data analysis you can look up how to turn that on sometimes you have to turn it on we don't i don't want to go over that every time we've seen it in the past but you can find that fairly easily and then we're going to go to uh the random number generation and we'll say okay that's the oh wait a sec i canceled it wrong button wrong button okay and so so we want uh <clears throat> the random number generation still think i got the wrong one that's a regression random number for crying out loud you're driving people crazy we're going to have one on the on the number of variables uh number of random numbers that's what i was trying to look up how many numbers do i want let's do 500 and then we're that's why i was thinking about that the whole time so that's why i was messing up before so we have a normal distribution which is a bell-shaped kind of curve so it's going to be around that center point the center point being three out of 10 so the movie industry not doing too well unless you unless you believe the hacks but i don't listen to them because they i don't think they're telling the truth and then we're going to say okay let's there it is we're going to say okay and boom so then we're going to right click and let's now notice a few there's some problems with these numbers right one is that this random data you can't give a a star rating of a 3.6 or something and two you can't actually have negative ratings so now i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of tweak this data a little bit which will manipulate it a little bit to be higher than 2.5 i'm gonna take this data and say well i i want it so it can't be negative and i want it uh so so uh so it doesn't have so it's rounded so let's do this like in two steps. I'm going to say first, let's round it. So let's round it. I'm going to say home tab paintbrush over here. And let's do a round equals round and tap. Now notice you might be tempted to say, well, I can round it by just getting rid of the decimals, but that's not going to do it because it's still unrounded in there. So, but if you do a round like this round, uh, round tab, this number comma how many digits zero we'll say just round it to a whole number and enter 
And so there we have it. Now, if I add decimals, there are none, all right? That's what we want. So then I'm gonna copy that down, so that's good. But now I still have these negative numbers and I don't want negatives because you can't do that on the rating system. So we have uh, no negatives. I'll just say no negatives. And we'll say, let's format paint that over here. How can I get rid of the negatives? Well, let's do an if function and say, if it's greater than zero, then give me that number. But if it's negative, then give me a zero. And I, I get the feeling, I understand people wanting to put like negative numbers in there, but the rating platforms don't let you. That's the thing. So we have to be realistic here. So we're gonna say this is gonna be, if this number is uh, less than, uh, less than, let's say one, uh, because, because it has to be less than one, then comma, what, what do you want us to do? So that would be zero and below. So it, it could be one or above. So then what do we want it to do? We want it to then say, if that is true, then give me a zero. If it's less than one, give me a zero, comma. Uh, what if it's false? If it's false, then I just want you to give me that one because it'll be greater than. I, I usually do it the other way around to make this greater, to make it true, but we'll do it that way. So we're gonna say, okay. So it gives me a one, that looks good. So I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna double click and copy it down. And so now every time it gave me a negative number, it gives me a zero because you can't go, you can't give it like a negative 10. People would do that. And I, I even that would be kind of unfair. I can understand even the not, I, not trying to side with the move with the, with the movie industry here on the, cause I think they manipulate the numbers, which is annoying, but still I can see why they wouldn't want to allow you to put negative 10. That would mess things up. Anyways, home tab, let's go to the format painter and then make this. Okay, so those are gonna be our numbers. So let's do our count now. So the actual data we got, we kind of manipulated it. So you would think that I removed the negative. So it's gonna be higher than, uh, than three, you would think for the mean. Let's check it out. This is gonna be equal to the count. Let's just count them. There should be 500, control shift down enter 500 okay and so this will be the mean of the population so this is the mean we're actually going to use this is just the data input mean the actual mean of the population is average of this these numbers control shift down control backspace the average comes out to three let's add some decimals to recognize decimalize to recognize so it's really 3.06 didn't change it that much actually i would think it would change a little bit more but that's fine 3.06 and then we're going to say the std of the population this is the actual stds this was an estimate the actual stds of the population are std of the pop and then control shift down control backspace two that's not too bad take our chances out there okay no no we're going to go home tab we're going to go font group and then let's actually, we should be making these red and white. And then we're gonna say control shift down. Let's make this red and white as well. Yeah, I just noticed when I made it red, then I get rid of the negative numbers. So let's go ahead and take this whole thing. I'm gonna format this, format paint it so that uh, it's currency and the negative num. Well, let's just do this. Let's just do this column. I'm going to take this column, which has negative numbers in it, format cells, and then I don't want to, I want to make the negative numbers not red so you can see them. Okay. So there it is. And let's put some borders around this one as well. Okay. So now, now, now this is the behind the scenes work. Now we're going to take an actual sample and the sample will just take a sample of like 50. So we'll say, uh, let's do a count and then a sample. And I'm gonna count from one to 50. We're gonna take 50 out of the 500. One, two, I'm gonna use my fill handle to just copy it down to 50 because that's not too many numbers. So I think this is the easiest way to do it then. Boom, 50 of them. And then I'm gonna take a index. I'm gonna randomly take uh, 50 numbers using an index function. So equals index tab. 
I want the array, control shift down of these numbers, control backspace, and then let's F4 on the keyboard because I'm going to copy it down to all 50, dollar sign before the letters and the numbers, comma, and then I want to randomly pick between, so random between, don't pick that random array thing because I do that all the time and uh, I don't want to, that's not what I want to do. Bottom number is going to be one, two, how many are there? There's 500, 500. So that means that we want to randomly select here the rows one this isn't row one this is row one because that's where we're looking to 500 because there's 500 rows and enter and it closes up and then boom copy it down there's our random sample all right let's make that black and white here let's make this black and white for a header header and then let's make this black and white too so we don't get it mixed up with the data we want and then let's make this this is blue now because if you don't have that blue i've used that blue you don't have to use that blue but i think it's calming soothing keeps me rolling without with minimal frustration because of the soothing nature of the blue okay it's going to keep shuffling and i'm okay with that it used to bother me but i have i have come to peace with it so now we're going to say let's make this l a skinny o over here by going to the home tab uh format painter and make a skinny o and let's start running some data on this thing so let's pick our n which is going to stand for the count which we already know is 50 but let's just double check counting it equals count tab control shift down 50. maybe i should call that sample count instead of the population that's the sample count okay and then we're going to say the uh uh the degrees of freedom now this is specific to when we use t's instead of the normal distribution i need the degrees of freedom because that's the thing that tells me how wide the tails of the graph will be how much different there's actually many different T distribution graphs depending on the degrees of freedom which is basically based on the sample count now there's only we don't have multiple samples we only have one sample so it's all you do to calculate is 50 minus the number of samples in this case we only have one therefore 50 minus one degrees of freedom are 49 so then we're going to be picking up uh what i'm going to we can call this the x bar x bar equals sample sample mean so in other words, remember that when we, we think about these numbers, the mean is going to tend towards the center point no matter how you think of it. We could have the mean of the actual population, which we don't know, the mean of the sample, which will tend towards the mean of the population, and this is the sample, and we could have imagining the mean of every combination of samples 50 out of the, sample, out of the population of 500, which we don't know, but we can imagine we're still approximating this here uh, in a similar way as we would approximate that on, on the on the standard deviation with the formula so this is going to be equal just to the average of our sample which is going to tend toward what what are you talking about why are you giving me flack that's not average average okay now i can't go over there control shift down technical difficulties all right so we're going to say that's three let's add some let's decimalize it decimalized okay so then we're going to say this is going to be s and this will be this stds of the sample because we don't know how many stds are actually out there in the population we know it we know it but we don't know it in universe with our movie theme right the characters don't know it all they have are the sample data so we have to approximate the standard deviation of the population with the standard deviation of the sample which is going to then be used to calculate the approximate standard deviation as though we took every combination of sample size 50 out of 500 with the use of our formula over here okay so three standard deviations the population which we don't know the sample which will approximate the population and then the standard deviation of all possible combos which we're going to use to build our bell curve so this is going to be the stds 
of the sample. STDs of the sample. Control shift down and enter. You got to make sure you ask the questions properly to get the proper responses of how many actual STDs of the sample there are. Well, this is going to be the standard error calculation. So now we can do the standard error, which is our normal calculation over here, which is we're dropping the second bit out because now we're looking for the standard deviation of all combinations of sample size. In our case, 50 is what we chose out of 500, which we're approximating with the formula. We don't know the standard deviation of the population, therefore are substituting the standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of n. So we're just going to say, all right, this is going to be equal to the standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root, which is a formula square root of n, which is the sample size and enter. And it's going to close it up for me, hopefully. And then we'll decimalize it to recognize. Let's add a few decimals out there. All right. And then we're going to say confidence level. We're just going to say the, the 0.95, which is an arbitrary number of confidence, meaning that there's a 95% likelihood it's going to be within the range. We're accepting a 5% likelihood just by chance it'll be outside the range. The alpha then is going to be equal to 100 or 1 minus 95 or 0.95, which of course, if we percentify to recognize, is going to be 5%. That's what's going to be in those little tail ends uh, that'll be outside. And then we could say, well, what's A divided by 2? which is of course simply just alpha oh oh whoa 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 alpha over two fingers are on the wrong things that's just going to be equal to the five over two dividing that by two percentify to recognize and then so that means of course if we if we looked at our picture then we would have we, we want most of the 95 in the middle and then we want the outer bits here to be that's going to be five percent in the outer bits and then 2.5 in each of the outer bits because they're symmetrical adding up to five okay let's go ahead and make this blue and bordered we'll make this border blue and then we can do the t interval so the t interval method oh whoa 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 t interval method my fingers just keep missing the right spot to type on. Let's make this black and white. Okay, so this is gonna, so now we wanna get the upper T. So now we're looking at our range. We know what the middle point is because we're doing that. That's our average, that's our X bar. So we're gonna construct this, our graph. And you can imagine just a bell curve, even though we're using T distributions, we're kind of imagining the middle point and now we're seeing what's the range around that middle point. So one way we can do that is with the t dot inverse. So we're going to say this equals the t dot inverse tab. And then it wants the probability. And we're picking up the probability of. And we want this bit here, the 2.5. But we're going to want it usually on the up. So if I pick that one, let's pick that one for now and then say comma. And then we want the degrees of freedom, which is the 49, the sample size minus the one samples. That's going to give us if I add some decimals, uh, the, the two. But I really want it kind of on the other side. So I'm going to say, let's go into it and say this is going to be one minus, which is going to give me the upper uh, two. So if I'm measuring this in T's, we're kind of looking up here at this other upper bit measuring it in T's, right? So then we can say, all right, that gives me then a margin of error. So now we're going to look at our distance that's not measured in T's, but basically in X's, right? So if there's 2.01 standard deviations, then we can take that times the standard error. So that we're gonna say the standard error is in X is how far away it is times 2.01 of them. And that's gonna give us, if I decimalize it, about that. And then we've got the lower bit, 
the lower limit, which is going to be equal to the so now I'm going to so now I'm going to actually build the range. So that's the lower and upper limit. So now we're, we have this in X's. Now we have the X bars, the middle point minus the margin of error. That's going to be the lower bit. Let's decimalize to recognize. And then we'll say this is going to be the upper bit, which is going to be the middle point plus the margin of error for the upper bit, decimalizing it. So in X's, that's going to be where we have it. So we have the middle point in X's here, up here to here, right? So if I look at that in X's, middle point and then the range if i look at it in t's which are equivalent to z's which are basically in standard deviations middle point would be zero and then around 2.01 it said up on the right and left all right so that's one way we can do that let's put some borders around that and make it uh, blue and bordered and then another way that we can do uh this is getting to the the margin of error directly so let's go we can use the confidence.t method. All right, so that's going to give us our margin of error directly with this formula. So I'll make this black and white. And so let's do that. So this is going to give us then, I'll just say this equals the margin of error. And this is going to be equal to the confidence dot t rather than dot norm and this time it wants alpha which is the whole thing this time it wants the standard deviation which you would think would be the standard error but it wants to calculate that kind of itself so it wants the standard deviation of the sample because we don't know the standard deviation of the population and then it wants uh the size and the size is going to be the n here so once again we're giving it n if it needs to calculate the degrees of freedom it will do that on its own so let's go ahead and say add some decimals and we get to the same number for the margin of error and then we could do the same calculation for the lower and upper limit from there which is simply going to be equal to the middle point the 2.7 uh, minus the margin of error decimalizing we see that we get to the same number as we got to up here. And then the lower limit is the middle point, the average minus or plus, plus the margin of error, margin of error. There it is. Sounds like a diet for a diet for kick lowering your butter intake. It's margin, margarine of error that I'm putting on my potato because it's not actually, it's just error. So it's margarine of error. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're gonna say, let's put, let's make another skinny over here. And then we could do this with our data analysis tool, could simulate this data. So we could do that by going to uh, the data tab and then go to the data analysis. And we want then the descriptive statistics. I could say, okay, now this isn't dynamic. It doesn't change with your data input, but it gives you a nice summary right, right from here. So the input range we want, I'll pick up the, the title on it. And I say, there's my input range, boom. And then uh, we want, I have to say that there is a title on it. So I've got to put that in there. And then the output range, I'm going to put it in my graph. It won't let me scroll up to put it up there though. It's kind of annoying. Let's go in here and then back over. So I want to put it right there. And then I want my summary statistics. I want my confidence level, which we set at 95. That's like, that's like the default because that's common. And then we'll say, okay, boom. And it gives us a lot of this information. Now it keeps shuffling over here. So it's not going to be perfect because this is static and we have numbers that keep changing but it gives us our summary if those were static numbers a nice quick summary uh, for us to take a look at okay so then let's imagine now we're going to be making our our graph now if you don't if you don't know how to make the t distribution graph you can approximate it with the normal distribution that we saw in a prior presentation but this time let's try to say okay how can i make the t distribution graph so i'm going to say home tab 
and let's put a paintbrush over here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the T's, which are equivalent to like the Z's, right? And I'm going to put that in the center. And I'm just going to say we want to go four T's or Z, which are equivalent to Z's up and back, which means that that should cover this graph if I'm measuring it in T's, which are equivalent to Z's, which are like standard deviations. Everything, even with the wider tailed graph, should be basically within four standard deviations. So I'm going to say negative uh, four and then negative uh, three. Oh, man. I don't know what happened there. Que paso. Let's go back on over here for crying out loud, for sobbing silently sake. Let's put negative 3.99. I don't like to cry out loud. I say for, sob for sobbing in silence sake. And then we're going to say instead of for crying out loud sake, because I like to sob in silence. And then I'm going to make this go down to four. And then, so we're going to go down to four. Okay. So then I'll go back on up. So there that is, and then I'll calculate then the, uh, the P of X we'll say, we'll call it. And this is going to be equal to the t dot dist tab and then this is going to be our x for our data input comma the degrees of freedom are 49 f4 on the keyboard to make it absolute so i can copy it down and then uh do we want it to be cumulative or not i'm going to say no cumulative zero close it up enter percentify to recognize add some decimals decimalize copy it down and then we can then say okay that's going to give us our graph but in, in t's on the x but i also want to convert it to x's so if these are my t's which are like my standard deviations how could i get to my x's it's just simply going to be equal to the middle point uh wait a second yeah the middle point which is this and then it's going to say plus this negative four in essence standard deviations or t's times the standard error which is the standard deviation in essence interval for our graph and then so and then i need to make this one f4 so i can copy it down this one f4 so i can copy it down enter uh decimalize all right let's copy that down boom Okay, so let's make this black, white, black, white, and then, okay, so then I'm going to go over here and we'll say, all right, let's center these. I thought I did that already. And I'm going to select this whole thing and make them a little skinnier, double clicking to make them thinner. And then we'll make this one a little wider. And then let's select this whole column, control shift down, control backspace, and then we'll enter a graph. We'll go insert. You could approximate it with like this kind of graph, bar graph, or like a line graph, but we're going to the area graph. We're going full fancy for the area. All graphs, area graph, and then boom, that's the one we want. Mui B to the N. And then, okay, so here's our standard stuff. Now we can just say we have this graph. Now I'm going to put on the X uh down here we could put either of these two i want to replace what's down here let's go this one and let's actually replace it with the normal x's because that's what we normally do actually let's replace it with these and then i'm going to click on it so it appears so there it is so now these are the x's uh in terms of the x's and then i want to put the t's which are which are like equivalent to the z's but to do that i have to have another kind of graph on top so we're going to graph the end bit. So so what I want to do is, is say it needs to be between this range, the lower limit and uh, the upper limit, right? So we're going to say, let's try to put like a little formula up here so it'll, it'll change dynamically. So I'm going to say that I want the lower bit to be this, the lower bit to be this, and that's going to be less than X which has got to be less than the upper bit, which will be here. 
Now to make that work as a text, I have to put quotes around this and then quotes around this and then the quotes have to have an and in between them or Excel will get mad. So we put an and between the quotes. Now that's still gonna be a problem because it gives me all those decimals. So how do I get rid of the decimals? I just use a round function. Going back into it, I'm just gonna put a round in front of this, round, round it out. Comma, how many decimals do we want? And let's make it two decimals. And then this one will round it out, round it out. And then we want comma, how many decimals? Two, close it up, enter. All right, that looks movie B to the N, BN, as they say. And let's go ahead and center that, that's centered. All right, so then we have to do an if logic test. Let's direct, put this down there, if tab. We have two tests, therefore I'm gonna embed an and as well. If and, the two logic tests are number one logic test. This X has gotta be uh, greater than, has gotta be greater than the bottom bit. It's gotta be greater than the lower bit. And then comma. Next test, we're still in the and part. This X has got to also be less than the upper bit right there, the upper bit. And then close that up, the and has been completed. Comma, the value, what do you want to do if that's true? I want you to give me the percent if it's true. And then comma, what do you want us to do if it's false? Just give me a blank, which I have to do by putting a quote, space, quote, end it. Now, before I hit enter, I need to make these two absolute so I can copy it down. Those are in column Q, so everything in column Q. I'm gonna put my cursor in it, F4 on the keyboard, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the number, enter. And then I can't see it, but I'm still gonna trust that it's correct. Percentify, so I can recognize and then add some decimal, then I'll double click it down. And then I'll scroll down to see if it actually populated the way it's supposed to. Okay, I think it did. All right, let's go back on up. So now I'm just gonna add that column to my graph, which should be the middle part of the graph. So I'm just gonna go chart design, data, add a data set. This is the series name. I'm gonna delete this bit, put my cursor in this cell, control shift down, control backspace to go back up, select here and then back until it populates and okay, okay. Mui bien beautiful. Now I want to put another X down here, which is going to be my Z's or my T's. So how do I do that? Well, I can double click on this one and I want to make a secondary axis. It puts the secondary axis on the right. I don't want that. So I'm just going to delete that. That's not what I meant, Excel. That's not what I meant. So I'll show you what I want to do. We want to go into the data, select data. And then we want to go into the second one and these need to be changed. Edit, the new ones are the T's, which are equivalent to the Z's, which are basically the standard deviations instead of measuring in terms of X's. All right, that's what we want. Now it still doesn't put it here because to put it there, we have to hit the plus button and then say axes, I want the secondary axis. It puts it there, but it puts it on top, Excel. I don't like it on top. So let's go, Let's go to the more, and then we're gonna go down to labels, and we'll say this one right there, that's the one I'm talking about, Excel. Put that on the bottom. All right, so there it is, that looks better. All right, now I'm gonna select this whole thing, Control Shift down. We're gonna say bordered and blue. And then if I check this out, let's just see if this makes sense. I'm gonna put a little, my little line in here so I could, uh, move it round and say, okay, the middle point, according to our interval, is should be the mean, which is currently at the 2.62. Uh, I say currently because it keeps changing every time I click on something, but 2.62, I think that looks about right. And then uh, it should be, basically, if I look at it in terms of T's, standard deviations, in essence, too up and too low because it's 95% about, right? So you'd say, okay, yeah, that makes sense because like two is right there and two is right there in terms of standard deviations. And that corresponds to the related X in terms of movie rating scores, which is, uh, which is 
lower at 2 and the upper at 3.2. So the lower is also 2 in the t movie rating scores on this one. And then up here, 3.2 looks about right, right? So this looks like the bell curve, except notice because it's a T distribution, it's going to have a little bit of a wider tail. So if, if you were to construct this with like the normal distributions, just to get a picture that looks similar, then then you're going to have a similar, you know, T's down here and and X's, but the graph the graph is going to is going to be a little bit tighter towards the middle, right? Because it's going to have less fat of a tail, but you can still kind of use that as a general idea conceptually to be thinking about in the same kind of way, your Z's and your T's uh, and your X's. And remember that we're talking 95% in the middle, recognizing that even with random chance, there could be 5% uh, in the tails where our sample uh, is not correct. Just, and by the way, uh, we came up with a, a middle point of the 2.2 uh, 2. 6, 2 versus the actual population of 3.06 and our range we came up with was from 2 to 3.23 and so 2 to 3.23 was is the actual mean is in between there right because it's 3.6 so it's under this bit so we're so the actual mean does lie you know within our range here okay